Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another list video today. Now, by list video, I mean things like top tens, top fives, whatever. But today's gonna be a top six. And why? Because I started with 10, I tried to limit it to five, and I couldn't quite get it to five, so I went with six. It is what it is. But today I'm gonna tell, tell you a few of my favorite musical vacations. So I'm talking about if you're a music fan and you're planning a vacation and you're like, hey, I wanna do something that's musical over my vacation, here's five places that I would very highly recommend. And they're very different, like some of them, uh, you know, are very quick trips, some of them could take a lot more time, and I'll kind of go over that as I go through the list, but let's get into it. Now I'm presenting these in no particular order today, but first off, New Orleans, Louisiana. Great place to visit for the music fan. Now I do have a, 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 some notes here, guys, if you see me referencing this, it's because I don't want to make sure I don't leave stuff out. But if you go to New Orleans, there's a good chance that as you walk through the French Quarter, you might just see some street performers. Um, a lot of times there's, well, not you might, you will see some street performers. Um, some places you want to definitely check out, make sure you check out Preservation Hall. Uh, make sure you go to the Jazz Historical Park. Um, clubs that you can check out at night where you're going to see live jazz like the Spotted Cat, uh, Fritzels, and like I said, anything on in the French Quarter along Frenchman Street or anything like that. Um, it's just a really neat town with a neat vibe, a lot of jazz history there. Now, another thing about New Orleans, um, there's this voodoo scene that's there and a lot of stuff, and, and even though voodoo itself isn't necessarily a music style, um, you can see how it's influenced a lot of the New Orleans music, so not bad to check out some of those voodoo museums and stuff too, kind of interesting stuff there. And one other thing that you have to do when you're in New Orleans is you have to get Café au lait and beignets. I mean, it's just, it's an institution there. But their seafood, all that is great. It's a great trip, so much fun. Learn a little about jazz, spend a little time on the river. Great city, it's good all year round, and you can do it as a quick trip, you can do it as like a one day trip, you can do it as a three or four day trip. It just depends on how many things you wanna see. Next up is Memphis. And boy oh boy, Memphis is a town every music fan should visit, because there are so many cool things there. So obviously you've got Graceland, Elvis Presley's former home, and that's a very popular tourist destination. You've got Sun Studios, where rock and roll was born. Um, you've got the Rock and Soul Museum. You have the Gibson Guitar Factory, where you can actually go through and tour and see how they're making the guitars. Very cool, and they have a showroom there where they sell pretty much every product that Gibson makes. Um, so, very cool tour for the guitar fan. In addition, if you're looking for something a little different, Stax Studios is also there, so if you're into more of that soul thing, um, you have that whole genre there as well. Um, you know, your Booker T and the MGs kind of sound. So it's just a really great place to visit for the music fan. And you got to go down Beale Street. That's kind of the, the focus. There's WC Handy Park there. But all along Be Beale Street, you, there's little clubs and you may see street performers. Um, you'll definitely hear live music coming out of the clubs. There's live music 365 days a year. Now Memphis is another one where you can really vary um, how long you want to be there. If you want to just go in, go to Graceland and get out, you could probably do that in a day. Um, if, if you want to check out several different things, you might need a day per event or maybe you can get a couple in a day. So it just kind of depends on what you want to see. But you can easily do like a one to five day vacation in Memphis. It's great fun and make sure while you're there that you check out the barbecue. I'm in the state of Texas right now and you know, Texas claims the beef brisket and I'm not going to argue with that, but Memphis claims the barbecue ribs and I'm not going to argue with that either. Memphis makes a good barbecue rib. If you're into barbecue, definitely check it out. And if you're into music at all, go to Memphis. Next on the list, Nashville, Tennessee. Now, so we started off with jazz. We went kind of to old school rock and roll and now in Nashville, we celebrate country music, and it is the home of the Country Music Hall of Fame, which is a really great museum. I mean, even if you don't like country music, I think you would still enjoy the museum. It's a very well curated, well laid out museum. Um, and there's just so much stuff to do there. If you go down Broadway, there's so many little restaurants and clubs, lots of live music, um, you know, and, and lots of places to eat. Little museums, like there's a Johnny Cash Museum there. Every, you know, Every other famous guy's got a, you know, famous Nashville guy's got a museum there or a record shop or something. Um, so it's just a really neat area to go to. 
If you are a fan of newer music, make sure you check out Third Man Records. That's obviously, if you're not familiar, that is the record label that Jack White owns. Jack White of the White Stripes and the Record Tours and Dead Weather and all those other projects that he's done. So, and if you make it to Nashville, you've got to check out the Grand Old Opry. And that's actually two venues, depending on how you want to look at it, whether you want the original Opry House or the new Opry House, uh, depending on how you're thinking about it. But, you know, the Ryman Auditorium is obviously quite famous, and there's just a lot of neat stuff to do there. And Nashville is another one where, you know, to be honest, I would say it's a one to two night trip for most people. You know, depending on what you're going to do, if you're going to check out a lot of the night scene and stuff, it, it can get exhausting. Uh, but, you know, you could make it a three, four, or five night if you, if you really wanted to do all that, but I think it's like a sweet spot for like a two, three day vacation. Nashville's great. If you've never been there, check it out. That brings us to Mississippi. Now, I know what you're saying. You're like, Mississippi, that's a state. The other ones were cities. Yes, very true. Mississippi is a state. But Mississippi has what's called the Mississippi Blues Trail. And it is a really, really neat thing that the state did where they put all these markers all over the state uh, for famous, you know, places where blues musicians were born or where they had success, where they played their first gig, whatever the thing might be, where record labels were signed. They've got all these historical spots marked and they have them all really well organized. And they have a website where you can go see all of them. They're all on Google Maps, so you can look them up and see exactly where they're at. But they also have an app you can download on a smartphone. And you can download that app and it will actually geolocate you and tell you what all the closest markers are. So, you know, you could see, oh, there's five markers within 10 miles of me or whatever. And you can actually go see all of them. And if you're planning a trip, you can go all the way up and through the whole state. Now this one varies greatly. If you just wanted to get in there and see some of the Delta landmarks, those are probably the most famous. Um, you could get in and out in probably a day or two. If you wanted to really drive the whole thing and go through the whole state, you might need three to five days, depending on you know how much time you want to spend in each area. But it's kind of neat because you can stay in some of these towns too. And if you're a subscriber to the channel, you probably remember a couple years ago, I did my uh, video about Robert Johnson. I went around and kind of traced his whole life. And I stayed in Indianola one night, that's B.B. King's home. And I stayed in Tupelo one night, that is Elvis Presley's home. So, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can see even when you stop for the night. And um, just a really, really neat thing to go see. Um, Dockery Farms is like basically the, the birth of the blues and you can go there. And I had an almost religious experience at Dockery Farms, dead serious. Um, but you know, there's just so many cool things to see Mississippi related to the blues. You can go uh, to Clarksdale and go to the Delta Blues Museum, which is just fantastic. You can see the number of different crossroads that people say are Robert Johnson's crossroads. Of course, I'll leave that up to your interpretation or watch the video that I made about that. But anyway, it is such a great trip for any fan of the blues. You gotta go down the Mississippi Blues Trail. Now this next one is very specific to not just a town, but a particular weekend. And Louisville, Kentucky, during the Jug Band Jubilee. Okay, now, let me just say this, I'm not hating on Louisville at all. Great town to go to. If you go during Kentucky Derby season, you can go to the Churchill Downs, really neat. Um, tons of bourbon distilleries in that area, so you can just do a big old bourbon tour. Very neat town, just in general, and it's beautiful. But one weekend a year, they do the National Jug Band Jubilee. And if you don't know why they do that, you probably should read this book right here. This is a fantastic book about the origin of jug band music, and it all came out of Louisville, Kentucky, if you don't know that. And jug band is a great, great, great genre that, and the author goes into why it's sort of been overlooked or why a lot of people don't understand it um, in here. But the author uh, is a man named Michael Jones, and I actually met him and he signed it there. I don't know if you can see that, but he did sign my copy right there. Oh my gosh, I could go on and on about the jug band Jubilee. There's performers all day. They stop the show in the middle of the day and they do classes on jug band instruments where you can learn to play the jug or the wash tub bass or the kazoo or whatever you want. And they're led by actual performers from the, uh, from the Jubilee. It is so much fun and it's completely free. So what I'm saying about the Jubilee is look on your calendar, find out when the Jug Band Jubilee is, plan your trip to Louisville, maybe stay a couple days before or after so you can experience some of the other stuff in Louisville, and then hit the Jubilee because it is totally worth it. I honestly feel like it is one of the most underrated musical events in the country, and it's free! Get to Louisville. 
and no list of musical vacations would be complete without Cleveland. Now, some of you might say, Cleveland, is that really, you know, what, what's from there? Well, Cleveland is the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the reason that it's the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is it was also the home of Alan Freed, the radio DJ, who created the first rock and roll radio show and actually coined the term rock and roll, to be 100% honest. So that's why it's in Cleveland. Now, there are some other things to see in Cleveland, like Cleveland is another great town, but the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame can be a quick trip. You can go in, you know, do like a one day, stay overnight, you know, or come in late and then stay overnight and visit the Rock and Roll Museum all day or whatever. But seriously, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is probably the best curated museum, or one of the best I've ever been to in my life, of anything. Even if you're not a huge fan of rock and roll, you will just be in awe at this museum at the amount of stuff they've done, the way they've curated it, the way they've organized it, and the amount of stuff that you learn walking through there. And it's just really cool because they, they'll have like a lot of famous, uh, you know, articles of clothing or guitars or whatever. Oh, guitars galore. The guitar, ugh. If you're a musician, yes. But, you know, like something that Mick Jagger wore on stage and you can walk right up to it and they've got it on a mannequin and you can realize Mick Jagger was a really small guy. Um, you know, Lady Gaga's tiny. They had one of her up and she's tiny, tiny. And then some people you're like, oh my gosh, that guy was huge. But you can actually kind of, it can make you relate to some of these celebrities on a different level. It's really neat, but it's just such a great museum. And um, if you make it to Cleveland, I would recommend you stay in Tower City. It's a neat little area where there's lots of restaurants and bars and stuff. And there's a train that goes right from Tower City right to the front door, not the front door, but right near the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And so um, it basically makes it real easy. You don't need a car or anything. You can just stay there, zip the train over, zip the train back. Again, very quick vacation. You can go in and get out quickly. And if you've never been to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and you're a music fan, you need to get there. Oh my gosh, it is so great. So there is my list of six great musical vacations, you know, for music fans like me. They're, they're all really great places to go. Now there are a lot of others and trust me, I had a hard time limiting. One of the things that I did leave Austin out and I know some people were saying, oh my gosh, you're in Texas and you left Austin out. Yes, I did that on purpose. Um, Austin is a great town too. Not gonna go into that right now. Uh, but I was trying to, you know, vacation. Like I, isn't, I, I can drive three hours and be in Austin. I need like a vacation. So that's what this is supposed to be. That might vary based on where you're at. You might need a plane, you might need a boat. I don't know, you might be able to drive to get to those places. But there are six places I would recommend you visit. If you like these kind of list videos, I've got a playlist of those. I'll link it in the description for you so you can check that out. And uh, they range from my favorite scales to my favorite vacations. Really appreciate you guys tuning in today and listening to all this. Uh, if you like what I do on this channel, please hit that subscribe button below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. See you guys soon.